Welcome to the WREL Daily Download. I'm Jack Hagel. The well-being of children has improved since the COVID-19 pandemic, but they're still worse off than they were 10 years ago. That's according to results from a federal survey of North Carolina students. It shows that many students feel sad and hopeless, and officials say more work needs to be done to improve their mental health. WREL Education Insider Emily Walkenhorst reported on the survey, and she joins us now. Emily, welcome back. Glad to be here. Emily, from a high level, explain what this survey is and how it helps educators. Right. So it's called the Youth Risk Behavior Survey. And basically what it is, is it's a comprehensive list of questions. It runs the gamut. You know, they ask about, do you get eight hours of sleep at night? Do you eat breakfast every morning? Do you uh, already drink alcohol? How many times a week do you smoke cigarettes? You know, just all kinds of questions about basically how young people behave. This is for middle schoolers and high schoolers. Um, Most states participate in this survey. Most school systems participate. um, But you can kind of, there's some choice there. And um, states can also add some of their own questions. So if in North Carolina, they decided they were extra curious about something, they can add questions on it. And essentially what it does is it serves to give information to educators and to health officials about how kids are doing and, you know, what targeted programming do we need? You know, if kids aren't getting enough physical activity, what do we need to do? And what did the most recent survey show? So the most recent survey showed uh, quite a few things. So generally the theme is, you know, things looked really bad um, in 2021. So this would have been while schools were still remote, because this is usually administered in the springtime. So a lot of kids were still learning remotely, were really shut off from a lot of socialization with their peers, even outside of the school setting, a lot of in-person socialization. And so we saw things kind of just peak in terms of not good. And um, But we're seeing a, a little bit of a bounce back in 2023. Um, And it's important to remember, you know, it's just one year of bounce back. You know, we'll see if this trend holds. Maybe it was a blip. Um, You know, just like you might argue 2021 could have been a blip. But it's also important to remember that a lot of these statistics had been getting worse for years. So if you go back to 10 years ago in 2013 when they administered this survey, a lot of the things in it were much better Uh, than they are now. You know, a lot fewer children said they felt sad or said they felt lonely. And, you know, the pandemic just kind of made it worse, but it was already getting worse. Do educators have any sense of as to why it was getting worse even before the pandemic? So the big villain is social media. Um, The survey, they added some questions this year about uh, social media use. But because they added those in 2023, we don't necessarily have data to compare. You know, we can't look at a line chart and see, you know, how all these lines coordinate. Increased social media use, you know, led to worse grades or something like that. Um, So we're kind of at the point of establishing a baseline to truly understand what kind of impact social media is making. We do know from studies that have been done elsewhere, there does seem to be a connection between Um, extreme social media use, um, maybe particular apps or particular habits on social media, um, leading to more depressed feelings. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll hear about what education officials say needs to be done to improve students' mental health. Stick around. Welcome back to the WREL Daily Download. We're talking with WREL Education Insider Emily Walkenhorst about the well-being of North Carolina students. Emily, health and classroom performance are closely linked. What did the survey tell us in that department? So we saw some correlations here um, with some health data, so not necessarily with everything. Basically, what we saw with physical activity was the less physically active you were, the less likely you were to get better grades. Um, We also saw, uh, for example, kids who felt more sad or lonely Um, tended to have worse grades. 
they were more likely to be D and F students versus A students. And so that and that could be a correlation, um, you know, it, where it's, you know, you don't know what started it. It's a chicken or egg situation. And um, but it does give us some indicators of, you know, if we want to solve this problem, what other things do we need to look at along the way? You mentioned diet as a factor in student performance. You know, the person at USDA who's in charge of school meals was in town on Tuesday. What did she have to say? Right. So her name is Cindy Long, and um, she was in town basically, you know, after all these local officials in Wake County said, you know, we need to get... Um, you know, we need to get more free meals to more students. So one thing we actually know from this youth risk behavior survey is that most kids aren't eating breakfast every day. Um, and a lot of them might be kids who could qualify for a free or reduced price breakfast at school. They're just not um, taking advantage. Maybe their families haven't applied for that benefit. Uh, maybe their families don't quite qualify for that benefit. But ultimately, the schools, they really want to see these kids eat. You know, Cindy Long talked about the importance of a nutritious meal. Um, You know, she talked with these Wake County officials about, you know, what their concerns were about making sure more kids are getting these nutritious meals. Um, And and those officials would, they really want to make sure that more people are signing up for these programs. And maybe more people don't even have to sign up for these programs to still receive these benefits. You spoke with a principal in Guilford County who's incorporating some practices to help students with mental health. Walk us through that. What did he do? So he works at an elementary school. So this survey is important to remember is only middle and high school students. But the thinking is you kind of start certain practices when kids are younger. Maybe they get in the habit when they're younger of doing different things. So you know, he does a variety of things to make sure kids are more physically active, ways to promote like, you know, little games throughout the school day. He wants to start school day with, a, you know, brief yoga sessions and kind of just get kids more in tune with their body, maybe a little more relaxed and see if that improves things. So basically what he has seen since they started doing this, and they only started doing this in around 2021. But what they've already seen is their test scores are better um, now, at least among those younger grades. Um, they're better now than they were even before the pandemic. So he thinks at least, you know, some of these measures are playing a role in those improvements. Now, I know education officials pay really close attention to these surveys. What happens next? How is this going to inform their programs? Right. So this survey is looked at by a lot of people um, at local levels, at state level, even at the federal level, because really what they're looking at is what are kids struggling with? So, you know, I tobacco is a big thing they've always looked at, at this with this survey. How many kids are smoking? Are we making any progress in reducing, you know, how often they're vaping, how often they're smoking? Um, And they really use it as kind of a barometer to see whether they're successful at maybe some of these campaigns or if there are things that they are not really working on that appear to be bigger and bigger problems for kids. And so you can, you know, look at maybe ad campaigns, you know, if you're that might be of interest more to the federal government. Even at the school level, they really want to see, you know, do some of our students really struggle with some of these things and maybe we just hadn't noticed before. Outside the survey results, uh, is the state planning anything or have they been planning anything that would sort of push students in a better direction health-wise? So something that State Superintendent Catherine Truitt has really zeroed in on is this idea of physical activity. If kids do better in school, or at least the correlation exists where they seem to do better in school if they're more physically active, you know, she's really interested in finding ways to make sure kids are more physically active. We know from the survey results, most kids are are not active enough. They're not meeting the recommendations for how often you should exercise. So one thing the Department of Public Instruction wants to do is they want to require school systems to find ways to make exercise more available to students during the day. So maybe that is finding more classes or opportunities that kids can sign up for that incorporate more physical activity. Basically, if you give students more options, maybe they'll take them. Well, I know that you'll be watching as that unfolds. Thanks, Emily. Glad to be here. 
That's WRAL Education Insider Emily Walkenhorst for her in-depth look at the Youth Risk Behavior Survey. Visit the education section of WRAL.com. I'm Jack Hagel. Thanks for joining us and thanks for listening to the WRAL Daily Download and for making us part of your morning routine. Another great way to get WRAL news is the Morning Briefing Newsletter. It's a daily email with triangle news, events, and headlines to help you get ready for the day. Sign up at WRAL.com newsletter. 